President Trump's attorney did his very best today to deny some of the key claims made by former FBI Director James Comey. Listen to a few things Trump's personal lawyer said compared to what Comey said. The president never suggested that Mr. Comey, quote, let Flynn go, close quote. I understood him to be saying that what he wanted me to do was drop any investigation connected to Flynn's account of his conversations with the Russians. The president likewise never pressured Mr. Comey. I took it as a direction. Right. I mean, as the president of the United States, with me alone saying, I hope this, I took it as this is what he wants me to do. The president also never told Mr. Comey, quote, I need loyalty. I expect loyalty, close quote. He never said it in form, and he never said it in substance. The dinner was an effort to build a relationship, in fact, he asked specifically, of loyalty in the context of asking me to stay. Who you believe likely boils down to this kind of high-stakes game of he said, he said. And who people are likely more to believe in this, the president or the former FBI director, Trump or Comey. Joining our conversation, Eli Stokels, White House reporter for The Wall Street Journal, and Peter Baker has been kind enough to remain with us. Uh, Eli, A, I don't think you could find two dissimilar people uh, if you launched a nationwide search. Uh, but B, more importantly and more immediately, you've been talking to Republicans tonight. What are they saying about this kind of thing today? Well, away from the TV cameras and the public statements, Republicans privately uh, are admitting to me that this was just a really bad day for this administration and by extension for Republicans generally. They're already having a hard time moving things uh, on Capitol Hill. They worry that their legislative agenda could be as good as dead. They said, one, one person I talked to today said when they read Comey's uh, prepared remarks yesterday, they said, oh, okay, I'm not as worried. And then they saw him go further today and one said to me, you know, he really came to do damage to Trump and he's doing it. Um, and, and, you know, there's just this sense that, that the administration doesn't have a good response. They don't have audio tapes to corroborate Trump's version of events. Um, you know, Comey may be uh, imperfect. He may have done himself some damage over the last year or so uh, politically. And we do live in this world where people sort of, you know, obstruction of justice, like everything else, it's in the eye of the beholder these days. But I think Republicans really do worry about where this is going. Going, and they recognize that publicly you have a president who 30 or so percent of the country uh, approves of and probably trusts up against a, a pretty seasoned prosecutor testifying today, giving answers to tough questions for two hours and almost 40 minutes under oath. Uh, Peter Baker, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, seven months ago tonight, uh, was a bracing night. Everybody's lead story was rewritten. It's been a bracing seven months. The president's Twitter feed on any given day can be a bracing experience. And boy, was it bracing today to hear James Comey call the president of the United States a liar. Well, it was. It's an astonishing spectacle if you think about it. Try to remember the last time a top law enforcement officer accused the president of the United States of not being honest. Not only not being honest, but but so untrustworthy that he, that is the FBI director, was from the very beginning of their relationship, took notes of their conversation because he expected someday there to be this confrontation that they're having right now, that there would be a, a dispute about something that was said that he, he believed that uh, President Trump someday might lie about a meeting that they had had. That's extraordinary spectacle and a, an extraordinary thing that Washington hasn't really seen now, really in a generation. It, 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 you know, people today on the phone were saying this reminds me of John Dean testimony at uh, Watergate that that may be a stretch we don't know but it is electrifying it is uh, in some ways shocking and it was it, part of what's interesting is that there has been something of a uh, you know we've gotten used to some of this stuff in some ways and so maybe it didn't have quite the bombshell effect that some Republicans feared it would have but if you really sit there and analyze what was said uh, you know it's uh, it's it's pretty tough stuff. Eli, the question I always ask you, I need answered tonight in 30 seconds. We're running through another break. If you're a Republican member of Congress, you go home for your next legislative break. What can you tell the folks you brought them from Washington? Yeah, nothing. And, and you know, what you're worried about is not, is not the next recess and the next town hall, but you're already starting to worry about 2018 because there is enough 
out there already from James Comey in the public sphere and enough people saying this does look like obstruction of justice. What Republicans recognize is they are going to be facing in November of next year a Democratic electorate that is motivated by the prospect of if we can flip Congress, if we can elect Democrats, perhaps we can have enough to impeach this president. Nobody's really saying the I word, but Republicans privately today say they are worried that this is going to just fuel that motivation that's already so high on the Democratic side. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.